Hello guys, this is Plavilos Korob from Laravel Daily Team and YouTube channel Laravel Business and today's video will be a lesson on how to deploy projects to live and to have a staging server to test. I will show you how we do that usually uh, with help of Laravel Forge but uh, it won't be directly related to Forge it's, it will be more about processes, so how do you deal with branches, how do you merge, how do you what scripts do you need to deploy, what commands to run, how to test and all of that. So in the first uh, part of the video I will show you how to have a staging server and deploy to live when the client approves and then in the second part we will deal with zero downtime deployments with Laravel Envoyer and maybe we will take a look at the versioning of uh, every release and we'll tackle that part. So let's start with a um, local example. Here I have laravel.test local domain which is from our own GitHub repository, one of demo projects of our quick admin panel. I've cloned it locally. And first, how developers work with the code. They clone only develop branch. So in every project there are at least two branches, maybe more. Uh, I use source tree by the way for, for branching and for all of that. So developers clone down develop branch only. They don't shouldn't even have the master branch locally ever. Uh, well, in very rare situations. So they clone the develop, not clone, pull down latest changes. And then, for example, you want to change, uh, I don't know, some text button. So we refresh, I've already played around. So we need to, to change this buy and sell near you, uh, change the title to something. So buy and sell near you, I have already the project open. For example, change that buy and sell near you. We refresh locally, it works, okay. Then we have to push somewhere. So we push develop branch. Uh, source tree already finds the change. Uh, we take the file and we do commit uh, and then change of title. Commit message is pretty important. We commit and then we push changes immediately to origin develop. So now our changes are in develop branch. And then we have two servers, two physical servers, uh, which are usually on different physical servers. In our case, it will be the same. So I've prepared two uh, servers with Laravel Forge. Uh, one domain is dev demo classifieds. It's a long domain, but uh, this is the demo, uh, the, the dev demo, and this is the live demo, which is actually public on our Quick Admin Panel website. Um, this is not public. So this is almost same domains, but this one will be known only for, uh, for client and for ourselves, or maybe even, even will be restricted to some IP address for testing. Uh, so we, we need to deploy to the staging now, right? If you refresh, the changes are not there yet. Uh, so we need to deploy and in Laravel Forge we have such a thing called deploy script. So this is what happens on every deploy pretty much. It, it can vary from project to project but more or less it's the same. So we're changing the folder, we're doing pull from develop branch, this is important, so it's not master, it's develop. Then we're doing composer install with some flags that it wouldn't ask us for, for something because it's automatic. Uh, then we're doing migrate force if there's new migration uh, and then we restart uh, PHP FPM. Uh, that's it and if we click deploy now uh, Forge will actually deploy that. And it's done so deploy is active again deploy now button which means that there's no error. Of course Forge could tell us that deploy is successful but anyway it's, it's successful and if we go to our dev domain and we refresh the page we should see buy and sell near you. So here's how uh, changes come to staging server, not visible to the public yet, not visible, uh, well, it is visible for the public, but for the clients, this no one knows the domain name. Now we can automate that with Laravel Forge and we do automate that. There's a button called enable quick deploy. I won't show you how it works because it needs some additional configuration, but anyway, if it enables quick, quick deploy, then whenever you push something to the branch, this deploy script runs automatically, which means that a uh, developer needs to just push to the develop branch and that's it, and then go to staging, refresh, and the changes should be there. Now, let's say the client approved the change, this one text, and we need to deploy to production now. Then we go to GitHub, 
well, there are multiple ways to do that, but basically we need to merge the develop changes into master and then uh, pull uh, from master to the live server. So for that, we refresh the page and there should probably be a warning. No, there's no warning, but anyway, pull request. We do pull request and we do from develop to master. There is one commit, change of title with changes. So uh, one thing which is pretty necessary to do is to review all those changes and GitHub is awesome at showing them visually so you can see clearly what are the changes. Create pull request uh, and then you can assign reviewers. So if you are in a team probably you won't be the, the same person to merge the change to uh, approve the pull request if it's a bigger team. So you can assign reviewers uh, or tell the tell someone to review uh, and then someone else goes here and do the merge pull request so basically merge merges from uh, from develop to master approving the change but this is not the deployment yet so the code is from develop it is in master already but then someone needs to go to the server and pull the changes so now we go to laravel forge but not into dev demo but we have a different server for non-dev and here, uh, deploy script is a bit more fast, fancy, but it does pretty much the same thing. And then we click deploy now. And it pulls from master. As you can see, the only difference is git pull origin master. It's successful as well. And we go to live now, demo classified. We refresh and we should see the same change by and sell. This is how it works more or less from staging server, develop branch staging server uh, pull request and to master. Uh, you can do that pretty easily without Laravel Forge. So set up and do those commands manually. So git pull and then uh, merge and all of that. But this is how typically we do that. Now we get to the second part of the video and how do we do zero time, zero downtime deployments, so to speak. So the problem here is when I click deploy now on live server, uh, there is, as you can see, some, some downtime, so five seconds or so, where the web page is not really accessible and it may, may throw errors, may throw inconsistencies if someone is performing some operation with database during that, there's no guarantee it will succeed, uh, unpredictable things for, uh, for the user. So first thing what we can do uh, without even zero downtime is to inform user that uh, it is deploying. So inside of the script we should do uh, we should do php artisan down um, and then when it's all finished php artisan up. So while the while the script is deploying and if we click deploy now and refresh the page meanwhile yeah, that would be service unavailable and you can customize that page uh, to like something is deploying or something like that uh, and then deploy is successful now and we refresh the page and the page is up again. So that's the least thing you can do is do artisan down whenever you deploy something and then do artisan up whenever whenever it's actually up. But now let's let's take a look at Laravel Envoyer and how do we uh, use that for deployments. So here I am in my Laravel Envoyer dashboard. I won't uh, show you how to set up Envoyer. It's a separate topic and I think I did the video already. I will link it up in, uh, in the description. But here's my server. So this is a project and in the project I need to create a server with IP address and I need to add SSH key to the server. And I did that via Laravel Forge. So basically what it does is if you click deploy, actually let's try it. Yeah, we click deploy. You choose the branch, you click deploy, uh, it is deploying, but the thing is the site isn't down at that stage. If we refresh, it's still up uh, while it's deploying. How is that? Because it's deploying in a separate folder on the server and then changes the link uh, after the deployment is fully finished. And see what's happened. Last duration of the deployment, 16 seconds. And if we go to deployments tab, we see the list of deployments. And if we go to see details, what it did, uh, clone new release, installed composer, activated new release. So basically it's 
showing everything that was actually done and on top of that you can you can add deployment hooks so-called deployment hooks so uh, whenever whenever you did something you can add more actions so uh, artisan migrate uh, clearing the cache some any basically any terminal commands here so add hooks so that is also really useful uh, but the thing is that the thing about Envoyer is zero downtime deployment because it deploys, as I said, in a separate folder and then changes the link so the user doesn't actually feel the downtime at all. But what is even more interesting is that you can roll back the deployment. So you can redeploy, uh, here's the button, redeploy any changes. So for example, let's actually try it in, in action. So let's change another something. Uh, locally, I'm still on the developed branch, remember? Uh, let's change some, I don't know, some more text. Uh, join the millions, thousands, change millions to thousands. Now uh, then we have uh, source tree and we commit uh, with message thousands. Then we do, we kind of repeat what we did already. So we will do a pull request in GitHub. So we go to GitHub, uh, we click on the repository, uh, and then we do pull requests, new pull request, from develop to master, create pull request, now we'll merge it, in, in theory someone else should merge it, approve it, but we merge, and now we can click on Envoy Deploy, so the changes should be in master. Well, of course, it should be first on staging and someone should test that. But for the for this demo, it's deploying, as you can see. Uh, and whenever it's finished, we'll refresh the live, live website. And as you can see, if we refresh the live website, it's thousands here. So it was successfully deployed and our changes are there. Final thing I want to show you is the releases and webhooks. What does it mean? So to deploy it now, we need to go to Envoyer website and click deploy. What if we could do that from GitHub directly? So we merge the changes into master branch and we somehow trigger the deployment. Not automatically, but from GitHub. For that, we can do webhook. So in deployment hooks, there's deployment info which says that deployments may, deployments may be triggered manually or uh, by making a request to the following URL. So we need to have this URL, so copy and paste here. And inside of GitHub, uh, we go to our, as administrator of that repository, I go to webhooks, actually, so webhooks, and I add a webhook with that URL. Delete the spaces. Uh, and for the events, I choose on what event that trigger should be fired. By default, it's on pushes, but uh, we need on releases. And what is a release? I will show you in a minute. And then it's active. Add webhook. Hook was successfully created. We sent a ping to test it out. Ping means that it's already deploying, as you can see. So already the webhook has been sent and it's already deploying. So be careful with that when you're set I, setting up web, webhook for the first time and the deploy is successful. But what is a release now here? Uh, we go to the code here. We go to releases. And there aren't any release here. Release is kind of a tag. So tagging, as you can see here, tagging specific points in history. So you, it's kind of a version. So create new release. Uh, version 1.0.1 uh, first release with some changes what exactly was changed like some text changes uh, and you create a release publish a release that release is published and if we go to Envoyer as you can see it was deployed immediately it was deployed immediately probably without any changes so so nothing has been actually deployed, but uh, it was triggered. So this is how you deal with deployments. This is our way of doing that. And not on every project. It varies from project to project depending on the client infrastructure. And can we use Forge and Envoyer like this one? But this is probably the most convenient way we came up with. Uh, if you have any questions, probably all of those things can be discussed in details. But this is what I could shoot in like 15 minute video. 
Hope it was useful. Subscribe to the channel and see you guys in other videos.